Hello and welcome to another episode of Bible Spy. Alright, so today I'm kind of responding to uh, some stuff. Uh, I looked up some uh, YouTube videos on Rain Wilson, okay? And um, I think I was just looking at something totally different, and then all of a sudden I found these uh, uh, videos on him kind of talking about uh, his religion and philosophy and stuff like that. Um, so check out to kind of understand what I'm reacting to. Uh, Rain Wilson, Why the Awkward Humor on The Office is Funny, Rain Wilson's Spiritual Journey, and Rain Wilson Talks About Baha'i. Also, if you're like really into my stuff, okay, and I can understand you are, so I'm trying to hold you back here a little bit, uh, I did do a uh, show on Bible Smack Radio about this. Uh, Baha'i and goodbye. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, I just wanted to kind of point out some things that I noticed with it. Uh, now, Rain is uh, pretty funny. He plays Dwight on The Office. <coughs> I mean, essentially, um, he describes himself as a fascist nerd. So, you know, it's funnier than, like, you know, if Hitler worked in your, you know, office or whatever. But, uh, basically, as I kind of looked at this stuff, what's kind of interesting is that you see all these, like, little super ultra-conservative you know, uh, exocentricities or whatever, and, you know, uh, what's interesting is that the guy actually is born and raised in kind of an ultra-liberal environment, so you don't, you know, have very much of uh, the ultra-conservative thing. Well, he gives a testimony of himself. He grew up in the Baha'i faith, and Baha'i is like, uh, you know, the next you know, like Islam Part 3 or something like that, you know? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, a uh, it's a monotheistic religion, and it's got a new prophet, Baha'u'llah, and uh, Baha'u'llah is like, you know, kind of doing the same thing Muhammad is doing, except now he's doing another religion, and it's more kind of uh, liberal and stuff like that. It's really kind of a monotheistic new age. I mean, it's kind of the best way I can understand it. And so, um, they're very socially, you know, more liberal, more, you know, let's get rid of ideas of sex and differences and stuff like that. But, what's funny is that even with that, even with that kind of new type of, you know, way of thinking, um, you know, Rain kind of comes to this point in his life where he grows up and as an adult... He says, well, I became more me-centered, and I kind of went to New York and just kind of lived for myself and all that kind of stuff. So, basically, um, this whole, like, you know, coming-of-age thing, that's where, you know, people come from a religious background, and then they just change when they got in their college age. Now I'm going to do something different. Well, it's not just simply, okay, well, I was just stuck in some severe religiosity. It's... It's pretty natural, and it doesn't matter if it's, like, liberal or conservative. People hit this point where they want to kind of identify themselves, so they do want to, like, you know, not be like their parents, whatever their parents are. Um, that's a very important point to have. Another thing is that um, he has this idea that his art, and art is the equivalent of worship. And so he'd say, you know, that he would glorify God and doing art and doing comedy, and his way of, you know, being one with this universe or universal God is, you know, doing his comedy, him playing Dwight, all right, and uh, getting all freaky and love of dictators and all that kind of stuff. That's, uh, that's, that's his way to worship God. Um, I think that a lot of Christians would say, yeah, dude, you're like right on with the spirit. Oh. And, you know, the problem is, is that he doesn't have a bad definition of art. And in having another religion than mine, he doesn't really have that, you know, big problem as far as religion. It's just not God's religion. Let me kind of show you uh, a little example here. This is in the uh, book of Isaiah. And um, let's see here if I can find it. Alright, 
It says in um, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 18, To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and the casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree, and will not rot, that will not rot, he seeketh, seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known, have ye not heard, have it not been told to you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are his grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them as it out as a tent to dwell in. Now the important point in this passage is that in art, you are God. You create things according to your will. That's what the artist does. The artist is his own God. In worship, you have to do things and conform to the will of another, which is the Lord. Um, and so if you say, well, I'm going to make you God, I'm going to make you, you know, the way I think you should be made, you're nicely taking authority over God. You're saying, God, I'm God, not you. That's the way that a lot of people worship. I'll worship you my way, God. I'll tell you what I think of you, God. Now, you may tell them nice things. God is a great God. We hang out, and I think he's pretty cool sitting over there in the corner. Man, God will pay my lunch today. <laughs> he's a great, hey, what up, God? <laughs> All right. That is you taking authority over God, and you are a sinner who's going to die. So it's not quite the best way you want to kind of hang out with it. You want to have respect for God and respect His will. So worship has to be under the control and the lordship and the headship and the sovereignty of God. All right? God can't be your co-captain. He's got to be the captain. Okay? He's got to direct your steps and your path. So that's, that's, that's a major difference that we see uh, when it comes to the religion of the world system, okay? And unfortunately, many Christian religions are part of that world system. Uh, equality is a big issue with the Baha'i and also, later on, all the New Agers. They all are into this equality concept, whether it's racial or sexual, you know, and a lot of people can agree with that. But then it becomes all sorts of other things. You know, you're rich and I'm poor. Well, you got to stop being so rich. So, you know, maybe I'll stop being so poor or something like that. You are different from me, so you got to conform to my ways. That's this idea of equality. What is the only number that is perfectly equal at all times? Zero. The only way to attain absolute quality is to destroy everything. That's why you got them Buddhists. They go, oh, oh. Rain Wilson is talking to Oprah. You know, and they're all into this emptiness. This, oh, emptiness. Oprah, emptiness. You know what I mean? So, basically, they have this type of thing where they, they focus on equality and it be, all becomes meaningless. And other things, when I looked at his comedy, he kind of focuses on the fact that, like, you know, it's through the power of him doing something goofy and Pam and Jim on The Office kind of go, <laughs> you know, because it's kind of like, you know, kill us seriously? Seriously? You know, all this kind of uh, focus is on absurdity. See the absurdity of life. Everything's absurd. Ha ha ha. You know, that's the office thing. That is the postmodern thing. That's why they made it so famous. Because they've got everybody thinking, everything out there is purposeless, it's meaningless, don't you get it? It means nothing. Ah, ha, ha. Oh, whatever, dude. <laughs> you know, and so, everything has no purpose, no meaning. Well, then there's no order, 
There's no design. There's no point. There's no passion. There's nothing. So all you do is you turn out a soul in a heart that has no purpose. It's just this piece of crap that sits in a chair. Okay? And that's what we get out of society. They, they have no purpose. They're meaningless. Just annoying, really. I mean, just kind of... I mean, sit there smirking at me. I don't care about that. I want to live. I want to have life. I want to have passion. I want to point. And you can't have passion. You can't have point if you don't have a purpose. And that's where this whole New Age crap is going. I think there's another one where you start to really kind of Really kind of explaining, like, hey, you know, let's be part of this new world order, you know. So, you know, that, that's kind of where everything's headed. That's where your culture is headed. It's where it's trying to program you. Stop. Stop having differences. It's just, it's just, everybody focus on the one thing, and the one thing isn't even a thing. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, you know. All right, well, all I can tell you is drug kills. Stop doing drugs. Crack is whack. You have to have a point. You have to have reality. Yeah, wake up!